campaigning, you know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was watching him last night, and I uh, respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation, as opposed to he used to work in XFM for a while. Yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm just saying is uh, it's it's good that he's he's given up a lot of his time to you know try and save the world and that, but you know there's a bit of me that's kind of like you know is he wasting his time a bit? Right. Well, what do you mean wasting his time? Well, he's he tried it before and no, 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 wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think the seven most uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia, and they get together and they can they can wipe out the the third world debt. Mm. I.e., they they owe us billions and billions of pounds. They can't afford to pay it back. So he's going to say let's let's wipe the slate clean and pledge I think a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But won't won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's you thinking? No, I just I knew I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I had ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for, the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know- look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, Right, and I wanted to go to the arcade. I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, "Don't come back asking for more and what have you." But I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <coughs> game on a fruity, and then go back, and she go, uh, "Go, can I have some more money?" And she goes, "We gave you a quid before," and I go, "I know, but I'm on holiday." And she goes, "There you go then," and then I go off and do the same thing. I didn't go. No, I wasted the last one. I'm going to pop this in the bank. Right. right. So, so you think that's what's going to happen with that's with, a, with that's the a nice, African nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there? That the Africans are uh, are Basically blowing it down the arcade <laughs> instead of putting it towards a fishing rod. They're blowing it down the arcade. They're trying to. They are trying. I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals. I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. I just As I Bob said, yeah, Bob said, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna it's, get the it's Snoopy. It's always gonna fall out of the little claw it's with rigged. me against the, the claw top. is not strong <laughs> enough. Yeah. Do not waste a- no, <laughs> no, Midge. <laughs> Midge, Midge, you have to write a song. Write another song, mate. They've blown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. So no, that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know, uh, I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a- it's a- Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London- Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Sleep easy. Saturday, yeah, don't worry. Carl is not going to be put in charge of G8. It's not going to be him, Blair. <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> that would be Brilliant. a joy if it were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what in one some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously. It's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's uh, what? What are you? What are you going to do? You're you're the only you know, the only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent. Yeah. You know, money out there, we've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads for charity. Go on. No, loads, I've done done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, what? Oh, I give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what, stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean? Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. But what, but, but the thing is, I do loads of charities, I do loads of things like, uh, Go on. I pay, I pay for tools, you know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver, paying right. for, uh, you know, a toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm gonna stop, to be honest. Why? Cause, um, do you know this, do you know this thing I do, Steve, right? No. This is, this is a fiver a month as well, right? <laughs> got, got, I got stopped in Leicester Square one day, he said, uh, oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold, are you gonna help her out? So I was like, oh, why me, right? <laughs> so anyway, so they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So Why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called, I don't know, call her name June or whatever, it doesn't matter. So- <laughs> It does to her, but go on. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month, and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh, first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had, uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little uh, picture of her and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up. 
and, you know, look after her, pay for her food and what have you. So, for a bit, you feel good, don't you, and you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> so he's saying, he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. <laughs> no, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. And this is, this is what I mean, people turn- <laughs> if they can get away with it. <sighs> that I don't know where to start! That isn't having a go, though. Oh, what do you think, so what do you think? You think they're going, don't, don't bother, don't bother, um, getting a job or anything. Get off a bit, isn't it? Get off a bit, it's June, oh, I don't isn't know, it? I don't know, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So but you I'll... think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time, is that what you're saying? That oh. you should just leave him to it? Just leave him to it, let him sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, just think, carry on? Do you know what this? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not looking words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that, do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up, do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads well, I of- I don't reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, but people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that, locals will love that. Right. Oh. Job done. Put him in charge of live. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know, uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, if well. you're listening, please, I would love, oh my god, a conversation, Bob Galdoff talking to, forget Kate Bush, forget that would Hammer. Be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. What's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He can talk to us next week. All right, I'm not gonna go- I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs> right. Play a record. All right, what we're having? Bit of, uh, bit of killers? Yeah. The killers, somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what, talking of, um, starving, I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on, uh, oh, yeah. uh Wednesday, yeah. Sure. Um, you must be famished. Uh, well, Jonathan, uh, Ross, uh, booked a table there. It came out, I think he's been trying to get there for a while and, uh, um, I think it's a waiting list and everything, right? And, uh, it well, was he's you're walking straight in. He can he's walk straight in with that, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, me and Jane went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray. Uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world, okay? Right. And, um, it was incredible. I mean, it's a cross between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yep. you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Hmm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little, got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or it feeds on worms. I, I, it was, I knew that they, one of their, um, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking, I'm not gonna be able to eat anything here. So I was thinking, uh, I had something to eat before I went. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking, they better not have mucked around the bread, right? Got there, beautiful, um, and, uh, it was, it was, it was really quite fantastic. And, and I let them know straight away, um, that I was a Philistine and they really accommodated me, you know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge, I, they, they put, um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which was more of a risotto, and there's tasting menus and that, and it was, it was, um, uh, really fantastic. But, Jonathan halfway through, on the way there, I don't like travel well, on the way there, he actually phoned me and said, why are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point, very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Well, you are, you have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver School Dinners <laughs> Program. <laughs> who's, they've got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. ratatouille, yeah. but they're going for the sort of chicken Twizzlers. Well, there's no chicken, I love chicken. I yeah. Like, I like, I, the chicken I can eat. I'm squeamish about red meats. There's nothing I've, you know, it's a mixture of, 
it's not, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or it's But it hasn't got eyes and legs things sticking I out of it. What are you but talking about? I, I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, I refuse to eat out with Ricky. Because I can't, it just sucks the life out of me. It actually makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses, always and lamb. you're whinging. You're it's always it's salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely bit of lamb. Who doesn't think lamb is the best of all the meats? Oh. And you no. just, you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just, it was, oh. And I tell you, and I put it in the, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, badmouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, you know, Late sixties, early seventies, came round to your place in Reading. It would have just been the smell of chip fat, Always just on. everywhere, chip pervading. Fat just on. one of those chip fat fries that's just yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day. I used to eat things. I away. used to eat beef and pork and that. And uh, it, it, I used to have to eventually, when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make a burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather anyway, <laughs> where I couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or something. A salad so, in your house would have been. I'll a, tell you what, a, a salad onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad in my house, right? It was when it was summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, great. <laughs> Grated egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion, and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Uh, and that was that was uh, that was a salad. But yeah. now is uh, that is that? Do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this 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 palate? And I don't even it's no, not even I've, a palate. I've, That's I've, too nice I've, words I've to use got for more it. squeamish as I've got older. Because I say I, I used to I used to eat beef but and pork. What do you mean squeamish? I don't understand what you mean squeamish. Oh, I suddenly think about cooked. it. I can eat I, I can eat like you know like it has to be blasted. It has to be unrecognised to be an animal. You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just <laughs> fed forty thousand with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going. I'm not into the fish, JC. I say you take the head off, cook, cook, really cook, take the skin off. I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But lunchtime, Would why you? would I spend? You'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime because we. I know what happens. You go in there. You have some kind of you know tiger in curry for lunch. You're asleep by one thirty. We're trying to work. We're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just <laughs> eating a sheep and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't. He Carl. He does not like the spare. He, he he'll go. He'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich. So I've having an argument over that fifty p that time. <laughs> I don't want to bundle no, Here's the situation, Carl. Go I on. lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. No, it's the way that you were like. I said, where's my 50p? You went, oh, you don't need that. That's not your decision at all. I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment or whatever. Rubbish. And he's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. Mm. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I, mean. I just I just think that value for money is important. Like, now, okay, so for instance, in the morning, I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card, zones one and two, right? It's about £4.70, I think. But before 9.30, it's about £6.50. All right, and then at 9.30, when the clock, literally on the clock ticks over to 9.30, it's £4.70, right? Now, sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about £20, and they just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes. I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30, and then I can get a cheaper ticket. Now, surely that makes sense. Surely that's logic. Mm. Don't you, I mean, if you were in that situation, Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse than uh, anything. It's madness. It's madness. I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I'd, I'd, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I if mean... If there was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh... If they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's I, I go, um, all right. Well, that is the case. That literally yeah. is the case. okay. But not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? Uh, I feel fla- uh, if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just- I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. Carl, what about you, Carl? Would you do it? It, it depends, doesn't it, what your job is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever, you can't say, oh, just- Ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation. Depends. 
Most of the time I've got to get in work early. I can't be hanging around to half But you don't know, do you? I've, so, I've, you know, I've, I've called him lots of uh, uh, filming. Was, uh, he, uh, I've seen him do one day, yeah. right? I've seen him for one whole day. He went away, he fell asleep at um, quarter to eight in the yeah. bath because he was knackered. So, yeah. you know, he has five weeks already. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. taking the piss. <laughs> Feeder, pushing the senses, quite a food related sort of uh, show isn't it? It is, it? Yeah, thinking of gluttony, did you Just see in, uh, <laughs> I think it was Heat magazine, huh? um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh yeah. She's lost considerable, she's lost a lot of weight. Oh yeah, and, she's lost um, five stone hasn't she? Please see that the headline was, um, I used to eat, uh, twelve packets of Doritos a night. At she's night. Twelve packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you've got to eleven packets and you're thinking, one it's more a, it's a bit peckish. One more do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. But <laughs> someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends, news stories, you know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared 23 stone. Um, they, what, uh, man died. Between the five of them, oh, come on. Between the five of them, the Phillips family from Worcester weighed more than 100 stone. Jesus. Well, how many are there, though? They spent five of them, and they spent 300 pounds a week on food. Um, a, an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Um, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't, um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it says here, that it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that competition <laughs> still going? He, br <laughs> he <sighs> broke five bikes. He broke five bikes by, uh, buckling the wheels. Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids, Carl. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. But the <laughs> bike just fell apart. Yeah. Who wow. knows, maybe now he's on that nude, uh, bike ride, you know, cause he's lost some weight. Oh, that would be painful, that, wouldn't that it? Would if one of them buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got, uh, another food related, uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via, um, my agent sent from someone here, okay, sent from someone at, um, XFM, okay, and uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought um, this might be uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday, and obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address, you returned it to someone here, who of course immediately forwarded it to my agent for ridicule on the show, don't panic, it's nothing that bad, okay. It's uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out on Wednesday night? Was the uh, an England game or something? Yeah. So you you were alone. You were home alone where you went tonight. Yeah. Did you enjoy your meal? Was it was it a quiche? Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. Cook for 30 minutes on 190. Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. Take an avocado, chop in half, remove the stone, <laughs> peel skin and slice. Place on salad. Put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing. Right? In brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He's just, uh, just, uh, everything else away. Right? Then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Remove quiche from oven, cut into quarters and put on plate. <laughs> Eat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Does she have to do that every <laughs> single time? She's like... No, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking, right? Um, and to be honest, that, that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. <laughs> And I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> he didn't even do that with instructions. It was too much. But, um, oh. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that good at cooking. And did that, you genuinely? Um, that's not cooking, though, is it, Carl? That's that's, that's heating up a quiche. That's co cooking it is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm I'm just. Kind so of do you? Long. Could you have figured that? Out? <laughs> you have left that note for you. Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and um, balsamic vinegar was? Because I've, I've, I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once and I said, oh, it's a bit... 
He's ever since, <laughs> right? Ye die. Years ago. I'm gonna die. Years ago. Oh God, it, they're leaving Mr. Magoo at home. It was, just... it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. <laughs> that, uh, oh God, what I do you mean? I nearly set what the do you mean? Because do you know, like when you're grilling food in a pan and all that, yeah, sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere <laughs> greasy. <laughs> so I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Bung them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught- well, They got she, stuck and they sort of caught on fire, I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just as I was sort of plunging it and might have you came in from work. She said, what are you doing? What are you- I said, no, I'm in sausages. <laughs> well, the oven isn't on. I know, they're in here. <laughs>